This week I had the opportunity to test the brand new Shimano Durace R9200P power meter in the Llama Lab to see how it stacks up. Now this is easily one of the most exciting power meter tests I've done in the last little while, if power meters excite you as they do me. Now why is this important? Well there's history, a lot of history here. A little over two years ago, back in 2019, I published an extensive report after testing 11 dual-sided Shimano-based power meters, including Shimano's own R9100P, with the summary of that being that there appeared to be issues with the drive side, the right, reading a little lower than expected. The testing was extensive, I did repeated tests, and multiple comparisons against a number of other power meters and smart trainers. There were similar results observed across the board. Keith Wakem produced a brilliant 30 minute video detailing exactly what was occurring on the right hand side. It's a brilliant watch. Keith really knows his stuff having worked on these types of power meters for one of the well known brands. The quick summary being that the integrated crank arm and spider design of the Shimano cranks makes it really hard to get accurate and reliable numbers when using strain gauges placed on that crank arm. So when Shimano announced the new DI2 group sets not too long ago and that there would be new power meters coming with those group sets, I was very, very keen to get my hands on one and put it up against the same tests as I have with the previous models. Now a few notes on this test and this video, it's not a full product review. All the tech specs and things are over on the Shimano website. I just simply wanted to know, does this new power meter fix the problems we saw with the old meter? The power meter that I tested was on loan for only 12 hours. I picked it up at the close of business and I had it back to them as soon as their doors opened the next day. This was a production unit off a giant TCR road bike. So the meter wasn't sent to me by Shimano, it's a production unit. It's what's being sold, literally what's on the shop floor. And as it wasn't mine, I had to be very, very careful not to put so much as a scratch on it. Hence me leaving the plastic on the unit. The only thing I did to the unit was upgrade the firmware from 404 to 406 to ensure it had the latest firmware before I started my testing. To outline the scope of this testing and given the short time period that I had the power meter, it's only an initial test. It's not a full blown conclusive review of the unit. I usually spend a lot of time testing power meters both indoors and out before producing a video. However, I believe there's enough interest in this power meter and the data to make this video. And as I said, it's a production unit. It's not a prototype, it's not a test. It hasn't been cherry picked off the shelf by Shimano. The testing was performed only indoors, so no outdoor riding with this. And I used the same testing protocol as I had used in the past with the other Shimano based power meters. The Llama Lab test has proven reliable and repeatable over a number of years. So that's exactly what I used in the Llama Lab. As my time with this power meter was limited, the first thing I did was a very hard 10 minute warm up on Titans Grove to make sure everything was bedded in before starting the Llama Lab Test protocol. And the results of that Llama Lab Test are right here. Actually, this is an extended Llama Lab Test. I thought I'd get as much time as possible on this unit. So we have over an hour of data here after my initial warm up. We have the Asioma Duo Shees. I thought I'd keep it in the family and put some Shimano pedals on the bike at the same time. The Wahoo Kicker 5 was chosen as the baseline slash control for the erg mode. And we have the FCR9200P as the power meter we are looking into today. Starting off with the steady state section here, 200 watts into 250 watts steady state in ERG. Zooming right in here. And initially, first observation here is there's a slight outlier there on the top. That is the Shimano meter. So we have the Fevero Asiomas 224, we have the Wahoo Kicker 223, so very close between those two. And we have the Shimano power meter reporting at 231, so a little higher than both of those other units. Now I guess you're asking, what's the left and right look like? That data is right here and looking very, very good initially. On the Fevero Asiomas we had 110, 113, so I wasn't quite 50-50, I was pretty close. The Shimano was reporting 115, 115. That's looking really good and appears to have addressed the issue that I was seeing with previous models with the right side reading low for this exact test. But things then got a little interesting. Kicking into the sprint, I put it in the big ring. Well, I actually nursed the chain up into the big ring. The last thing I wanted to do was throw a chain off and scratch this crank set and I had no power readings. So the magnet wasn't quite positioned right for this to be working when the chain was in the big ring. Yes, this power meter does require a magnet. So that aside, Back into the small ring for now. I'll resolve this later on, and you can see that in the data in a minute. And we did a sprint in the small ring. This is three seconds smoothed and not looking too bad in the sprint, to be honest. There's no massive gaps. Everything's up around 1200 watts. So for this initial test, nothing really of concern for the sprint. 
The next test in the Llama Lab is the over and under. So 20 second intervals at 150, 350, and then repeat, and then 150, 450, and then repeat. This typically tests erg mode responsiveness and ability to hold those zones for short period of times with trainers. However, it's also a good test of power meters. Diving into that right here, and we have an outlier. So we have the Asiomas 259, we have the Wahoo Kicker 259, and we have the Shimano power meter, the R9200P, reading 277, a little higher across the board. So a little concerning there, and it wasn't really within spec, that being 21 watts higher right there where I held the mouse. Diving into the left-right balance of that, and here's the rabbit hole. The Favero Asiomas is reporting 130, 129, that's pretty balanced. The Shimano power meter reporting 133, that's close to the left, and 144 on the right. So reading a little higher, and what it was reading higher on the right, that was what was contributing to the total power being above both the Favero Asiomas and the Wahoo Kicker 5. So we can see there through this section and clearly through the right there with everything else on screen, it is the Shimano right-hand side reading 254. Everything else was around 228 at that point. Immediately after the overs and unders, I did a slow ramp test in sim mode. I'll dive into that here. Uh, the Asioma is just taking a second or two to kick in. But we have 166, 169. Asioma is probably a little lower because this little section at the start. But again, there's an outlier there, being the Shimano power meter reading a little high. Flipping to the left, right on that, 78, 83, 88. So again, I'm not balanced. That doesn't really matter though. This is one for one and one for one on each side. Uh, the Shimano right-hand side reading a lot higher than I would expect, again, contributing to that total power being higher than both the Favero Asiomas and the Wahoo Kicker 5. Given this was the initial ride of the crankset, was it a betting-in thing? Did something settle after that first sprint, just throwing that left right off? I stopped, unclipped, zeroed the Shimano meter only, resulting in 50-50 on the screen of the Garmin head unit that I was using, and I continued testing with some sim mode riding here, and again in those overs and unders, putting the magnifying glass back on those. So diving into just the sim section here with a small little ramp test. Uh, 149, 149 for Vero and the kicker, happy days. 154, a little higher on the Shimano. Again, that trend still remains even after doing a zero offset on the new Shimano meter. Overs and unders, again, exactly the same protocol as before. Not as much of a gap, however, it was still there. I have been told the Wahoo Kicker does factor in a very small percentage of drivetrain loss, hence we are seeing very close numbers between the Faveros and the Kickers. The Shimano, on the other hand, is the outlier in this case again. Diving into the left-right split of that second set of over and unders, we have 113 left on the Favero, we have 115 on the Shimano. Pretty close. On the right side, 115, not too bad. 123, again, the outlier being the right-hand side on the new Shimano crankset, contributing to that higher power number. Again, against the Faveros and the Kicker 5. Looping back to the data issue that I had with the magnet placement, that it wouldn't read power at all when I was in the big ring, I repositioned the magnet, brought it out a little further, and then redid the steady state tests, a sprint, and some riding along tests, just to isolate this. I was running out of time, it was about 10 o'clock at night. So here are the steady state tests, uh, starting off around 100 uh, sim mode and then breaking into 200 watt erg, 250 watt erg here. So a very small llama lab test. And again, 184 on the Faveros, 186 on the kickers or 184.6. So again, they're within spec. 193 on the Shimano average. And you can see here the outlier and the higher zones. Tracking well, just reading a little higher for this second set of steady states for two and a half minute blocks. Left, right split of that. Left, Favero, 92. Left, Shimano, 92. I'm happy with that. Right, Favero, 92. Right, Shimano, 100. Hmm. One final sprint before pretty much cooling down. It was getting late. Uh, everything looks okay here. It was only a short sprint. This is three seconds smooth, but nothing really of concern through here. Um, again, this is only initial testing. I will do longer follow-up sprints indoors and out to really put the magnifying glass on this, but there was nothing, there was no 150 watt to 200 watt uh, discrepancies there. Um, I have seen power meters that wouldn't even register a thousand watts recently, so that's looking pretty good. And into sim mode. Now, these Shimano power meters, be it from Shimano or other manufacturers, outdoors with all the randomness and sim mode, again with all the randomness, usually read pretty good. Um, it's the erg stuff, the steady state stuff that really uh, causes them to, well, produce results that we don't expect. So here's some sim mode, a little bit of an acceleration right here. All looking pretty good. What have we got? 132, 133, 135. Off the top of my head, that's looking within spec there for the sim mode stuff. Let's put the acid on this little 
power section through here. This was very low cadence, 320, 316, 325 for around 40 seconds, very low cadence. That's looking not too bad. Again, the trend there with the Shimano reading higher than the other two. And finally, a quick look at the cadence from this unit because it does report cadence as well. Uh, not a problem at all. It all looked pretty good uh, when it was uh, recording data. What have we got here? 93, 94, 92. Can't fault that. And finally on the cadence, we'll jump to the other end here and we'll just point out the fact that cadence estimation coming from trainers is usually pretty good. There's some outlying cases where it might not be though. And through here with the really low cadence and I guess the smoother pedal stroke with that lower cadence, the Kicker 5 is having a little bit of trouble being, what was it, it's within four RPM. Uh, it's close, but no cigar. Again, if you want accurate cadence, probably use a power meter or use a cadence sensor on the crank if you really need that kind of precision for your cadence. But for me, that's all looking pretty good for cadence. My takeout from that data set was that yes, the new Shimano power meter is different to the old Shimano power meter in that the right side does not read low through my testing protocols. However, it appears to read high. I don't really have enough confidence in saying this is how they're all going to be. I'll definitely need a lot more time indoors and out with one of these meters. And I need to look into things like the pedal stroke analysis using cycling dynamics on either the Garmin pedals or the Favero pedals just to see if there's any change in peak power phase between those two steady state sections. If you loop back, the original steady state section I did right at the start after that warm up was pretty good, albeit a little high. But then later in that Lama Lad test, we saw the right reading high and the left being okay. Something had changed there. Was it me? Was it my pedal stroke? Questions that I would like to answer. Now with this swing from low to high on the right hand side of things, I'm wondering will we see any change in data coming from Pro Tour riders who are sponsored by Shimano and using these power meters? Now they probably won't give us access to their data, but there's enough sources of data out there to do some comparisons of their hill climb times, maybe some TTs. If they're putting out a little bit more power for the same time and same speed, hmm, we might be able to get some insight on exactly what this power meter is up to. Now from here, that's all I have from now. The unit has been returned. I'll offer this data set to Shimano for review and I'll also do my best to get a hold of another unit so I can do a lot more testing before coming to any true conclusions about the quality of this power meter. This initial data set indicated there were differences, but if I was to ask myself, could I use this particular unit to compare other power meters to? No, not at this point in time. So stay tuned. I'll do my best to get a hold of one of these power meters and do some further testing. Until then, hold tight. Hit subscribe and we'll see you soon.